Since the dawn of time, man has been curious. And for almost as long, the Vibes Broadcast Network has sought the truth. Investigate. Discuss. Explore. Okay. Maybe in other episodes, but this one is just... Listen to the Vibes. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I have here Miss Kim Sorrell. She is an author of Cry Until You Laugh and Love Is. She's also a speaker, cancer survivor, a humanitarian, and a director of a nonprofit. Yes, all of those. <laughs> all of those. <laughs> you wear many hats, huh? I do. I wear many hats. Yeah. Good thing I look good in hats. Not everybody does. So. <laughs> I, I don't wear them. They do. They look awful on me. But anyway, um, let's let, <laughs> let's talk about you and um, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and we'll get into a good conversation. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It is so great to be here, Kyle. Thank you. Uh, so I am a serial entrepreneur. I started my first business right out of high school and oh, I've wow. been in business my whole life. Um, I got involved in the nonprofit world in the mid nineties and have never turned back. I think um, giving back and serving people and helping wherever you can, whatever it is, a lady across the street, carrying groceries for somebody, helping in the third world, whatever it happens to be, I think changes your life dramatically. Yes. And so uh, it certainly has changed mine. And so I've been in that world for a lot of years. Um, I have lots of kids and lots of grandkids, and they are all over the place, including Texas. I oh, really? Texas. Yes, in Dallas. In Dallas. Yeah, oh, yeah my youngest. It's about yeah. uh, three and a half, four hours from here. Oh, well, you can go visit them. Well, maybe I need to do that. <laughs> um, I, I know it's kind of sensitive, but uh, you and your husband, um, and may God bless his soul, um, you know, both had been diagnosed with cancer uh, relatively close together, and you lost your husband. And um, Can you kind of tell me about that experience? Yeah, it was a very... Um interesting bizarre weird crazy experience but i was diagnosed with breast cancer mm. and uh then going through things and you know when i was it's interesting i got a phone call you know i expected the lifetime movie moment where the doctor calls you and your husband into the office and very quietly says i'm sorry but you have cancer but that's not what happened instead i just got this phone call at three o'clock on a friday afternoon so I couldn't talk to anybody, but I called my husband right away at work and it seemed like he was home in a flash and, and uh, just held me. We both cried and he held me because we had no idea what the future held. Cancer is a scary word. Yeah. And, um, but that's what you do. Husband's out there. If that ever happens, he did exactly the right thing. Just hold her, just hold her. That's what she needs. So uh, then four months later, my husband who had been having stomach problems and the doctor just kept saying it was because of what I was going through. Mm -hmm. And so it was nerves or it was whatever and take some Rolaids or Tums, uh, but actually was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Oh my gosh. A horrible diagnosis and uh, thought that he would live. The doctor thought, you know, he's young and healthy. I was 47 and he was young and healthy and um, tall and thin and, handsome by the way and uh so he thought he'd live you know a year or more and six weeks later he passed away oh my gosh i'm so sorry yeah thank you thank you he was a great guy he was a great guy i learned a lot from that i have to say one thing that i learned is that that there are th some things in life that you don't get any say over they just happen like mm -hmm. cancer right like it doesn't discriminate, it can hit anybody at any time. You never know. So hang on to people, be kind to people. But um, it's not something I'd ever pick. 
I wouldn't choose to have cancer. I wouldn't choose for my husband to have cancer. I wouldn't choose to lose my husband at 47 years old when we're supposed to be that couple sitting in rockers on the porch in our 90s drinking lemonade, right? That was the plan when I said I do. And so to lose that dream and lose, lose that was quite a bit. I never would have chosen that. But there are choices I can make. Like I can choose to live. I can choose to live a full life. I can choose to be happy. I can choose to be joyful. I can choose to help other people. I can choose to embrace life instead of complaining about it. And uh, especially with what we've just gone through with the pandemic, how much complaining can there be <laughs> in one world? My word, if we piled it all up, we'd be to Mars and back a whole bunch of times. I have a son who works at NASA, so I guess I thought I'd throw that in. But anyway, it's it's not worth it. The complaining just takes energy. And we're all going through the same thing. And we're all here. And why not help each other out? And why not embrace the day, whatever the day happens to bring us? Now, where would you say you got your strength to, to, to have the attitude to want to live? I mean, you've gone through so much. I know a lot of people would just give up, especially losing a spouse. I mean, where did you get the strength to, to keep going? Well, I have faith. I, I, I believe in, in a place after this life. I believe that there's a place. I believe I'll see my husband again. And so it wasn't saying goodbye forever, um, even though I miss him like crazy. I believe in a higher power. So I think... A lot of my strength comes from that, that and my dad, I'd say, because my dad was a pretty sassy guy. And uh, I think I got a little, little bit of his sass, maybe. Well, I can't imagine living this life without God in my life. And um, I, it seems like there's a, I don't know, an underlying culture of trying to, to, just get rid of him altogether. Like he's, he doesn't exist. And I, I wouldn't want to live in a world without God, you know? Yeah, I agree with you a hundred percent. It's a whole, it's a whole different life when you know, you're not alone. When you know that you are created in his image, that you are perfectly and wonderfully made the way you are, that you're created to be who you are. So live your real self Yeah, and that, that God loves every single one of us, no matter our religion, our race, what country we're born in, how much money we've got in the bank account, our sexual orientation, our anything. We are all loved. Every single one of us is loved. And I think love is so important. You know, if you feel unloved, it would be easy to say, why live? You know, yeah. what is life about? What does it matter? But where there's love, there's life. Oh, for sure. Well, I mean, I don't want to get too deep and philosophical about religion and, and all, but, you know, I, I believe that all the religions are based on the same God, just a different interpretation. I think man is kind of polluted what God really is. So I'm, I, I don't adhere to any specific religion. I'm, I'm a spiritual person, but I'm a big believer that, uh, and then, then you decided to write a couple of books. So tell me about uh, what got you started on that path. Yeah, well, my first book, Cry Until You Laugh, I started writing when I was diagnosed with cancer. I went to a bookstore and everything was either depressing or very medical. And I thought, I just want to know what this feels like. I want to know what it's like to have cancer. What does it even mean? Like, do, are there choices I make? What, what is it about? And uh, so I started writing kind of as a way to update family and friends. Hey, I'm going to the doctor tomorrow or this test has come in or whatever it happens to be. But my writings were a lot more than just I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. And before I knew it, 5,000 people were reading my writings. Oh, wow. And uh, so that turned into a book, actually. I wrote through my husband's diagnosis, through his death and through the rest of my treatments. And, and so I wrote for a little over a year. And that book is Cry Until You Laugh. And I'm happy to say that it's helped a whole lot of people going through the same thing, um, but also to just take a spiritual journey on the path. Um, whatever religion, I agree with you, whatever faith, whatever walk, so, or not, or non-walk even, but 
to go go on that journey. Um, it's a spiritual journey. So, and then losing my husband made me really question love, like the reality of love. You know, you, there's no, I, I like books and there's no handbook on love. There's no manual, there's no love for dummies. And so what we know about love, we learn from other people. We learn from our parents. We learn from people around us. And believe it or not, not everything we've been taught about love really is love. Not everything done in the name of love really is love. So I thought, well, what is this love thing? Like, am I doing this love thing right? And, and what is it really? So I decided to take a 2000 year old poem that you probably heard at weddings, love is patient, love is kind, mm -hmm. does not envy, does not boast, right? right? And I would take one word a month and figure out what is love that is patient? What is love that is kind? And the majority of the time I was working on this, I was in Haiti, which is an interesting place to, to do it all. Uh, but I'll tell you, Kyle, the things that I found out about love blew my mind, it, like rocked my world, things that I thought were true that are not and what love really is is so different than what i thought it was oh yeah well and if you want to talk about love is patience just talk to my wife <laughs> 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 yeah i i agree um when it comes to any kind of relationship and this is you know the way i i've interpreted it over the years is it's there's an equality there, not a superiority. It's a hundred, a hundred. If you're not both putting everything you got into it, it's not going to work. Uh, you, you, you know how it is, you know, it's patient because sometimes we disagree. Um, and, and that's the good thing about relationships is that we do disagree, but we know when to compromise and I, I just don't know if I, I I could do it again because my my wife that I have now she is the embodiment of what I thought marriage and having a wife would be um, my to to what I look to is my grandparents and I, I don't know the exact number but they were married for like seventy something years that's wow. what I want yeah you know, the the first one didn't work out so well. I think we were too young and we both had different paths and it's good to have a lot in common, but it's good to support each other in whatever it is that you want to do. Yeah, I think that's so true. And what a beautiful, beautiful thing to say about your wife that that really is sweet. And I agree with you after learning about love, maybe I should have just come to you because you <laughs> have a pretty good handle on it. But uh, one thing that I did learn about love is love is not an emotion. You know, it's not like we are in love, we fall out of love, you know, whatever. It's not an emotion that just kind of happens to us or that we have, you know, whatever, like fear or excitement. It's mm. not like that. Love is who you are, who you can be to people. It is walking, talking, living, breathing, giving, doing. Mm -hmm. Love is an action. Love is all encompassing. It's the embodiment of, of who you should be. And with that, then, if you are loved to other people, whatever love you're getting back doesn't matter. You have no control over anybody else. That's you right. I mean, Kyle, do you have control over Michelle? Is Michelle, is that your wife's name? Do you have mm -hmm. control over your wife? Probably not. Nope. <laughs> Definitely don't have control over her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, we have control over nobody. So marriage relationship, friend relationship, any sort of relationship, but we don't control anybody, but we control ourselves. That's right. And so we give love, we live it and give it and give it 100% without any expectation of anything in return. That's one thing about love, because the minute you expect something in return, it's no longer love. It's doing something to get something, right? That's, right. And that's what unconditional is. Yeah, exactly. So love is kind. You know, the very second one is exactly that. It's being kind, doing kind things, showing kindness with zero expectation of getting anything in return. Right. So like, you know, not a thank you, you know, how often have I said or heard people say, oh my gosh, they didn't even say thank you, you know, or 
I went to their daughter's wedding, where are they in mine? You know, whatever it is. But the minute you do something to get something, that's not love. Love gives, period. Love does, period. Exactly. Well, you know, my wife and I, we, we always do things for each other, but we don't expect that. And when you said about control, if you're controlling someone in a relationship, that's not love at all. You know, you see that way too much where you have some narcissist that they feel like they, I don't know what it is in their minds, but they feel like they have to control what the other person thinks and does and who they hang out with and all these other things. My wife, she will ask me before she'll go and hang out with her friends, but I know she's going to come home to me. I don't worry about those things. I don't, I don't have to worry that she's going to go and mess around on me. And you know what, if she did, I would just, you know, go my own way, but I know she's not going to do that. And she, she should have a life outside of the marriage, you know, with her friends and things. She does the same thing for me. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things love always trusts is in that poem. And that's, that's right. what that is. It's trust, which is, so vital to a relationship, right? It's just so, very so important. And uh, if you don't have trust, I don't know what you have, you know, it's, um, it's a tough one. But one thing that about love too, is that when you know what real love is, and I did the homework for you, it's in the book, Love Is, and it's all laid out. And so you don't have to do the homework. All you have to do is read or listen or whatever, or follow me or something. And I'll give you, write to me and I'll tell you what it's about. But um, is that uh, it's all you have to do. All you have to do is love, period. So with that means you're not trying to change people. You're not trying to fix people. You're not trying to control people. You, there is no judgment. There's no discrimination. There's no racism. There's no... Um, trying to fix someone. There's no telling people what they're doing wrong. There's, you, you al can allow people to just be who they are as they allow you to be who you are. You be who you are. Mm -hmm. No matter what people say, be who you are, live the real you. Live, live who you're created to be. You know, you're, yeah. you're here. Just do it. Do this life thing. And let other people do their life thing because it's theirs. And That's so right. all you have to do is love. That's all you have to do. And with that comes this incredible freedom because now it's not my job to tell my kids, my adult children, what they're doing wrong with their money or why did they buy that new car? Or, you know, why is she being mean to him? Or, you know, none of that. There's none of that because there's none of that with love. That's not my job. You know, if somebody comes to you, somebody comes to me and says, hey, you know, what do you think about this? I'd, I'd like your advice. That's one thing. But when you're doling out unsolicited advice, yeah. that just gets you in trouble, right? <laughs> I'm guilty and of that. No one's, yeah, pretty soon no one's coming to Thanksgiving anymore. So, you know, just let people be who they are. Love people where they are for who they are and love yourself for mm. who you are. That's a problem. I mean, we're, we're so protective as parents that, you know, we were critical of the person that they're with. I mean, they may be treating them bad, but I had to learn that I needed to step back and let my daughter make her own decisions. You know, she was in a bad relationship. And if she wanted advice, I would tell her, I'm going to give you the honest truth. So you better be prepared for it. But at the same time, I didn't step in, you know, if, of course, if he was abusing her, then I would step in, <laughs> but, you know, I had to let her find out for herself, make her own decisions. Did you find when you try to, to press the issue, they will try to prove you wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The kids do that. You know, there's a little rebellion, I think, in all of us and, and uh, hopefully we tame it a little as we get older. But um, right, I mean, there's something about that when a parent says, don't do that, that it seems so much more tempting. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, with, with the health issues, um, you know, my grandfather, he had gotten severely hurt at work. And this was back in the 60s. And he had uh, broke his back. And he had to learn to walk again. He didn't walk very well, but he had one issue after another. 
and I watched my grandmother. She never complained. She just, she did everything she could to help him. I mean, you know, uh, probably TMI, but she would change his catheter and, you know, help him any way that she could. And I thought, man, it'd be great to have a relationship like that. And my first marriage wasn't like that. This one is, I, I'll be honest with you. And this is just me. I feel like a burden on them, but my wife's like, you're, you're not a burden. You would do the same thing for me. If, if I was in the situation, cause I have a lot of health issues and that's another thing about patients. She's got to be patient with me. Um, I mean, I guess y'all didn't even question that you were ready to help each other out in any way you could, huh? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's what you do. It's what you do for people, right? It's what you do for people that you love. And I think you should love everybody. Right. So it's what you do for people that you love. And it can be tough because uh, it, it can be exhausting. It can be tiring. But when you go back to love and you remember the day you said I do, or you remember the time your relationship got together, right? you go back to those moments then changing a catheter is nothing it's uh you know it's what you signed up for the good and the bad the hard times the easy times you know it's not all rainbows and unicorns right that's right and so you um you just do it like i don't i don't know that you question it and i i can tell you that going from being cared for to be a caretaker it's an interesting transition and mm -hmm. It's hard, it can be hard to be cared for. Like we, you know, we, we can do it. We want to be tough and, and we can do it. And we don't want to be a burden. Like you said, the word you used, you know, we don't want to be a burden on others. We want just to bring peace and happiness and joy into people's lives. You know, we don't want to burden anybody with anything. But love would say to that, that you have to let others love you too. That's right. And, and people want to. Your wife wants to mm -hmm. love you and help you. She wants to be kind to you. She wants to do what she can for you. And sometimes it's uh, getting a little humble and, and accepting the help. It's, it's hard to be, you know what I mean? Uh, and one thing that I, I remember preacher telling me that don't steal other people's blessing. So when they want to do something for you, you let them because that's a basically a feather in their cap, I guess you'd say. And it, it, it's very difficult though, because, you know, used to being independent, I was on my own for 10 years. And, you know, when you, you go from being this healthy, active person to not so much anymore, it's, it's, it's a hard transition for you. You, you don't want to admit it that, well, you know what, I can't do these things anymore. And, Sometimes you need help. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And, and you want to help. Oh, of course. Well, so, you, so people have got to accept your help. So then it makes sense for you to accept theirs as well. And yeah, I, I would think, you know, maybe even especially as a man, um, it could be hard, yeah. hard to do. Well, we, we are supposed to be the, uh, the provider. You know what I mean? We just, we, we want to be the one to take care of everything. And when you can't do those things anymore, it, it's a hit to the ego. It really is. Um, another thing, and I don't know if you touched on this in your book, you know, like and love are two different things because we may not always like our children. <laughs> we may not always like our spouse, but we, we always love them. And uh, that that's, that's a lesson some people have to, to come to reality with, you know, you, you're not always going to like the person you're with or your children or even your friends and other family members, but don't forget to always love them. I think that too many people give up on their marriages and relationships because for a period, they don't like the person they're with. Maybe that wasn't the right relationship, but that's, that's a test. I mean, do you, do you touch on anything like that in your book? Well, I, I do only in that, uh, that I, I think it's not so much liking the person or not liking the person as it's not liking what the person's doing. True, true. How they're, how they're behaving, you know, what they're, what they're saying. 
So you still love the person, you just don't like what they're doing. Right. And what you do today is something that different than what you're going to do tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times it's a season or it's, uh, I don't know, in the moment, you're not liking that, you know, you're not liking your six year old telling you how to do how to change the tire because they know better. <laughs> and their bedtime increase by an hour. You know, you might not like that, but you love that child. You That's love right. that child. And they're doing that today, but tomorrow's another day and they're not going to be doing those same things. And when you love people through it, I had this time, I'll tell you, I, uh, early in my marriage, um, I was going to be the first woman president and I had my life laid out before me and marriage and children were not involved in my grand scheme. <laughs> and so until May of my senior year in high school, this tall, dark, handsome man walked into the room and I was immediately smitten and asked him to marry me 10 days later. We got married less than a year later and he was the love of my life for sure. Wow. And, uh, but early in our marriage, again, I'm a little sassy. So early on, I was like, guy, is this all there is? Like, I was just not content. I was uh, thinking, is this my life really for the rest of my life? I've got, I, we had babies two years after we got married. And so here we are, we're young with these babies and he's going to work and I'm taking care of kids. And, and uh, I don't know, life just got to be sort of mundane and sort of regular, you know, which can be good, but can be bad. Right. You know, oh, like, yeah. where's the, let's go get some ice cream. I mean, whatever, anything. Right. And I just thought, okay, I want a great marriage. I want a great marriage. And so I'm going to do everything I can to make my marriage great. I'm going to do everything I can for my husband, everything I can, I'm going to do for him to make him happy. I just want to make him happy. And I thought I'm not going to put a time period on it. I'm not going to say I'm doing it for a month or I'm doing it for, you know, two weeks. And if he doesn't respond, then forget it. Then I'm out. I decided, no, I'm not putting a time limit on it. I'm just going to do. And if I never get anything in return, I never get anything in return. That's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because making him happy makes me happy. Oh. And when he's happy, I'm much happier, right? That's right? And so when he's miserable, that's no fun to be around. So I wanted to make him happy. So I just did little things. Like I, I'd leave him a little note before work sometimes. Or when I went to the grocery store, I'd buy his favorite candy or make his favorite dinner. You know, just try to do little things whatever it happened to be, just anything I could to make him happy. And I'll tell you, I didn't expect anything in return. My husband had no idea why I was doing this. I think he probably liked the change uh, from doing nice things for him and making him happy from instead, hey, you're home from work. Here's the baby. I'm out of here. You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. He would like that change. But, um, but it did change our relationship. It changed our relationship. It changed... Uh, how he treated me. Um, but mostly it changed me because it changed my attitude. It changed who I was as a person, as a wife, as a mom. Um, and so, you know, sometimes you got to just make the decision and go for it. Yeah. Don't wait around for somebody else to do something. You know, love would say, no, it's up to you. You step out. You just love, go love. True, true. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so happy to hear you say those things because there's i don't know what it is with the world now it's all about me 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 no one wants to be uh you know i get in the bible you're you're called a servant when you you know you want to serve other people you want to do for other people and not so much for yourself all the time i mean yes you, it's important for you to do for yourself but to do for others that it's one of the most beautiful things in the world but Everybody seems to be me, 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 me. And then to hear you say you wanted to make your husband happy and not expect anything in return. I can already hear some people watching the video going, I can't believe she said that. Ah, that's awful, awful. And why I, I don't understand that attitude now. Yeah, I know it's interesting, right? And it probably sounds, I don't know, Pollyanna or submissive, you know, or something. And trust me, I'm all about equal rights. Like yeah, I you know, march for women's lib. Like it's, it doesn't have anything to do with um, a man versus woman. Like it right. doesn't have to do with that. It is, um, 
it's it's how happy do you want to be you know you get to pick your happiness right and when you're around happy people you're much happier when you're around miserable people it can be miserable you know mm -hmm. then it then it can be hard to find you're happy and so why wouldn't you want to make right. people around you happy why wouldn't you want to do that because mm -hmm. it, it's for your benefit as well right right and, and and you know I, I just don't understand that attitude where you don't want to make other people happy and you notice that the ones that complain about that kind of stuff are the most miserable pe people on the planet yeah i know I, don't you feel bad for people like that like no one wants to live like that i think no. people get in a rut like i had this couple actually i'll tell you it was my daughter years ago and her husband and they got into this rut where they were just barking at each other mm. they weren't talking anymore it didn't matter what they were saying it was bark, bark 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 you know it was just the way they said it the tone of their voice you know like it was not pretty it wasn't good but it was a habit it had become a habit it wasn't for any good reason but it, was, it became a habit yep. and um they needed to break that habit they needed to break that habit and start talking nice to each other. And when they did, things changed. When they decided, oh my gosh, look what we're doing, you know, mm -hmm. stop yourself and go, oh gosh, is this really the way I want to live? And listen to how I sound, you know, tape record yourself sometimes. It's not pretty. And yeah. uh, figure it out, figure it out. You know, it, you either need to love the one you're with or walk away, but you That's don't right. need to live in misery. That's what you don't need to do. And if you're married to somebody and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this, give it one more shot. Give it one more try. Mm -hmm. Do everything you can to make them happy. Bring the happy back. Bring it back. Bring the love back in. And on your side, no matter what you get back, because you can't control that person, right? So you love. It's up to you to love 100%. Mm -hmm. You love 100% and give and do nice things and whatever. Then, after a while, if things just aren't good and and the other person just, you know, it's just not going to be ever good, mm -hmm. walk away, walk away. Don't live in misery, but but give it another shot. Give it another try before you walk away. That's right. There's already enough misery in the world, so don't don't add to it. And by no means am I a perfect husband. I strive to be as good as i can and you know I, I i learn lessons all the time i'm in my 50s but i still learn lessons all the time <laughs> and you know my my wife has you know primarily became the the breadwinner for the family you know i'm, I'm on disability but you know she's she's the one that goes out and works and all that and i'm i can only do a little bit at a time but I try to clean up the kitchen. I'll try to cook the meals, that kind of thing. And then, but she does that for me too. You know, um, I spent yesterday baking cookies and cupcakes for her <laughs> friends at work, you know, and that brought a, a, a glow to her, you know, and that makes me feel good. That's what, a, that's what doing for others is. You see them happy. That makes you happy. Yeah, it really does. It really does. I think we need to recognize that more. Mm -hmm. Really do. Now, um, you are a humanitarian and a run a nonprofit. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so Race of Hope International is the name of the nonprofit. And we're a partnering organization. We work with people in their own country that mm -hmm. have a passion, a vision, a mission to do something to help people in their own country, whether it's a school, or a medical clinic or w whatever it is to help people. And they already know the language and they understand the culture mm -hmm. and they know the real need. I think, especially as Americans, it can be really easy to go into a place and tell people what's wrong with it and want to fix that because because we know better. But the <laughs> truth is we don't. Every culture is different. That's right. And what works in the United States doesn't necessarily work in Haiti or Burkina Faso or Kenya or wherever. Mm -hmm. And so working with people that understand the culture and tell us what the real need is, then then we know how we can help and we just walk alongside and help. 
And so we have schools in the Dominican Republic and uh, oh, wow. water projects. We work with, um, uh, we work in Burkina Faso in West Africa and we work in Haiti a lot. We've worked with a lot of organizations in Haiti in the hundreds of organizations in Haiti. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, in some other places. And so yeah, it's, a, it's fun, it's mm -hmm. fun. And you're giving back and the, you know, the person that's getting the benefit from that may never even know who you are, but you've, you've brought some joy to their life and, and that should make you feel elated as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I think when you give, when you serve, I love that word serve that you brought up earlier. When you serve, uh, it doesn't matter if anybody knows that you've done it. That's right. It's sometimes it's even more fun if they have no idea that you've done anything for them right that's right um, but when you serve you get outside yourself mm -hmm. you get outside your head and you see people in a different way and uh mentally i think it's one of the healthiest things you can do is to serve other people that's right that's right yeah you, you you're getting your 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 riches in heaven and it, you don't necessarily have to get the limelight when it comes to those things that's not the point of what you're doing and it helps you to kind of forget about your own problems and realize you know what some of my problems aren't quite as bad as somebody else in another country or even down the street you know you don't know what's going on next door right or even the person at the grocery store that rams into you with their cart Mm -hmm. And you can get so angry or somebody cuts you off in traffic, you know, but you don't know what's going on with them. You That's know, right. maybe they just got a bad diagnosis or they just lost somebody or they're on their way to the hospital because something tragic happened or, you know, who knows, or, or they just have a lot of anger because of things that have happened in their life. But, you know, give, give people a break and realize that everybody's got a story. That's right. Everybody comes from a different place. And so, you know, you don't have to beat up the guy that just cut you off in traffic. You can let it slide. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes I just, I'm, I'm kind of in my own head and worried about whatever's going on in my life. And I forget that sometimes I get upset with that person that's cut me off in traffic or, you know, just rude to me at, at the grocery store, like you said, or running into me with their card. I, I forget. So, you know, we're, we have to practice that. It's, it's a hard lesson to learn sometimes, but you need to. Right, right, yeah. right. Love even them, right? Love That's the right. guy that cut you off. You know, don't like what he did. I mean, nobody wants to get cut off, but it doesn't have to turn into something bigger than it is. Yeah. God says, love your enemies. So, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes, but you need to because you're going to expect to, for somebody to feel a little sympathy for you sometimes when you're going through something. So, you know, it karma, what, like I said, comes around, goes around. Yeah, and, that's a good point. And what's the name of the organization again? Rays of Hope International. Rays of, and you have a website for that? Um, we do. It's uh, um, uh, Rays, O-H, so of hope, uh, dot org. Okay. Rays and uh, what about social media? Uh, yeah, Raise of Hope, we've, we've got a Facebook page, whatever. I'm all over social media and a lot of uh, things that have to do with the organization, I put on my own social media mm -hmm. um, and my name has way too many letters, but I'm literally the only Kim Sorrell spelled my way in the entire world. <laughs> so I'm easy to find on all platforms. It's because um, there's two R's, two E's, two L's. S O R R E L L E, but Kim Sorrell. I love to hear from people. And if anybody ever wants to help or learn more about our organization or want to know where to get my books or anything else, please reach out. I'm doing a free thing on my website right now, a oh. free 14 day love challenge. Oh. And my website is just kimsorrell.com. And when you sign up for the love challenge, I will send you a free wristband, a WWLD. What would love do wristband oh, cool. and so, yeah so please sign up for my love challenge and i'll get that in the mail to you you're going to become a certified marriage counselor 
<laughs> I feel like I could be, I feel like I could be, I mean, I was in the ups and downs of marriage and um, I know how to do it. I know how to do marriage. And the, the book, is it available at Amazon or both it of them? Is, should I say? It is. It's available uh, really at all booksellers. It's available. Uh, it's uh, available uh, Barnes and Noble in the bookstores. So it's available in some brick and mortar stores as well as being available online. Oh. And um, it's funny uh, too, if I have to say so myself, it's what I'm told, but it's, um, so it's not a rainbows and unicorns kind of love book. It is uh, what I think love is patient is, what I think that means. And then the story that happens to me in Haiti, um, mostly in Haiti, that brings me to the truth of what love is patient really means. And I was chased by a motorcycle gang I slept outside with the tarantulas and the chupacabras and whatever else is lurking in Haiti. I, uh, I experienced a whole lot when I was there and the stories are in the book and uh, all everything you need to know about what love really is, is right here. <laughs> You've been through the ringer, haven't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I have. I might have to uh, get a copy and donate it to the library. It's a, so it can help folks. So I'm, I'm going to have to put that on my list of things to do. Oh, that would be awesome. Well, I want to put all the links up in the description so people can click on it and go to it and, and uh, can give to the organization. And I, I appreciate what you're doing. And uh, I, I appreciate your time today. Thank you for agreeing to come to the show. Oh, my word. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I appreciate what you're doing. Oh, thank because you. Because you're you're touching lives with with all that you do, and I know how much time and effort it takes to do to be on your end of the microphone. And so, thank you, thank you for what you do for countless people that you don't even know. Well, that's the that's the goal. I mean, I've done some things in my life that I, I regret, and uh, I've had some challenges come up, but something keeps me going and I, I just feel like there's so much negativity in the world that we need to do something to bring positivity. And, and I mean, you're doing a whole lot more than what I'm doing. Uh, I just, I'm, I, I appreciate the fact that uh, you allowed me to spread your, your message to everyone. So, well, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, of Everyone's course. Good thing. Right. And if you have uh, any more books come out or, you know, maybe a fundraiser coming up or something, please let me know. I'd like to, you know, try to get the word out. You know, we can put it on our social media. We could do another show to talk about it. Anything I can do to help, I, I would love to. Well, thank you. I really, really, really appreciate that. And I want to thank everyone who's joined us today. If you are new to the channel, I would hope that you'd please subscribe. And if you are regular, thank you for your support. I appreciate you, your support because without you, we just couldn't do what we're doing. And uh, check that subscribe button for some reason on YouTube. They unsubscribe people just for no reason at all. I, I don't get it, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how all that stuff works. <laughs> but please, everyone, take care. Be kind to one another. God bless. and. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.